This happened to me about six years ago. I'm now in my mid-30s. Back then, life seemed perfect. I had a beautiful fiancé named Emily, and we were deeply in love. I never thought I could love someone as much as I loved her. We did everything together, and every moment felt special. We knew we wanted to start our own family and share that love with our own children. A few months after we decided to try for a baby, we found out that Emily couldn't get pregnant. We were devastated. It felt like the ground had been pulled out from under us. We went through a lot of emotions during that time, but we eventually decided that we wanted to adopt. We wanted to share our love with a child who needed it. We started the adoption process, which was long and stressful, but we were determined. After about two to three months of waiting, we were finally able to bring home a beautiful baby girl. Emily was over the moon with happiness. Seeing her hold our daughter for the first time was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. We named her Lily, and she brought so much joy into our lives. For the next two years, we were a happy little family. Emily was an amazing mother and I loved being a dad. But then things started to change. Emily began to get sick. At first, it was just little things. She would get tired easily or have a headache that wouldn't go away. But then it got worse. We went to doctors and specialists, but no one could figure out what was wrong. It was terrifying to watch the love of my life get sicker and sicker and feel so helpless. I tried everything I could think of to help her, but nothing worked. A couple of weeks after Emily passed away, it felt like someone had cut out my soul. I was completely shattered. The house felt empty without her, and every room was a painful reminder of what I had lost. I didn't know how I was going to go on without her. I felt like giving up on life. But then I remembered Lily. She was only five years old, and she needed me. I knew I had to be strong for her. I had to be there for her, to take care of her and make sure she knew she was loved. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but I knew I couldn't let her down. After the funeral, I decided we needed a fresh start. I couldn't stay in that house any longer. It was too full of memories. So I packed up our things and we moved away. I hoped that a new place would help us heal. It was hard to leave, but I knew it was the right thing to do. The hardest part of all was telling Lily that her mother wasn't coming back. She was so young and I didn't know how to explain it to her. I tried to be as gentle and honest as I could. I told her that mommy was very sick and that she was in a better place now where she wasn't hurting anymore. She cried a lot and so did I. But we got through it together. In the years since, it's been a struggle, but we've made it through. Lily is growing up to be a strong, beautiful girl, and I know Emily would be so proud of her. I still miss Emily every day, but I've found a way to keep going. I have to be strong so I can take care of my daughter. She is my reason for living, and I know that as long as I have her, I can get through anything. Lily and I settled into our new home in Florida. It wasn't easy at first. Everything reminded me of Emily, and there were days when the pain was almost too much to bear. But I knew I had to keep going for Lily's sake. She needed stability and love, and I was determined to give her that. The first few months were the hardest. I had to get used to being a single parent, and I often felt overwhelmed. There were so many moments when I wanted to ask Emily for advice or just hear her voice, but I couldn't. I had to figure things out on my own. I made mistakes, but I also learned a lot. I learned how to braid Lily's hair, how to cook her favorite meals, and how to comfort her when she missed her mom. Lily started kindergarten that fall. She was nervous, but also excited. I remember holding her hand as we walked to her classroom on the first day. She looked so small and fragile, but also so brave. I was proud of her, and I knew Emily would have been too. As the months went by, Lily made friends and settled into her new routine. She still had moments of sadness, but she was also happy and full of life. Life isn't what I expected it to be and it certainly hasn't been easy. But I believe that Emily is watching over us, and that gives me the strength to keep moving forward. I've learned that even in the darkest times, there is still light. 
and that love can help us overcome even the greatest of losses. It was a hot, muggy afternoon in Florida, and I was drenched in sweat as I stood frozen on my doorstep. My heart pounded, not from the June heat, but from the gut-wrenching sight before me. Kimberly, my girlfriend of six years, was in the arms of my best friend, Jake. They were too close, too intimate, and my world shattered in an instant. But let me start from the beginning. A month ago, my life was turned upside down. I discovered something that was truly heartbreaking about Kimberly, the woman I had spent the last six years of my life with. To explain what happened, I need to go back to the beginning of our relationship. I met Kimberly through Jake, my best friend. Jake was always the player type, the kind of guy who could charm any woman with a smile and a few smooth lines. When he introduced me to Kimberly, I assumed she must have been one of his many flings. But she wasn't. We started talking, and things seemed to click. We went on a few dinner dates, and before I knew it, we were in a serious relationship. Five years into our relationship, we were blessed with a baby boy. That should have been the happiest time of my life. But things started to take a strange turn. I noticed Jake spending more and more time around us. At first, I thought it was just because of the new baby. I didn't pay much attention to it. Jake was my best friend after all. But then, a few weeks ago, Kimberly asked me what I was planning to do for Father's Day. I told her I was thinking about spending some time with my father during the day and then coming back in the evening. She said it sounded like a great idea, which struck me as odd. Why was she so interested in my plans for the day? Father's Day arrived and I headed to my father's house. We spent a wonderful morning together, catching up and reminiscing about old times. Yet, despite the good company, I couldn't shake off a nagging feeling that something was wrong. It was an inexplicable sense of unease that gnawed at me. An hour into my visit, I couldn't ignore it any longer. I told my father I had to leave. I couldn't explain it to him. I just had a bad feeling about what was happening back at my house. The drive back home felt like an eternity. My mind raced with possibilities, each one more dreadful than the last. As I pulled into the driveway, my heart thudded in my chest. I stepped out of the car, my legs feeling like lead as I approached the front door. That's when I saw them. Through the living room window, there was Kimberly, laughing in a way I hadn't seen her laugh in months. She was in Jake's arms, their bodies pressed close together. They were kissing. I wanted to cry out, to scream, to burst through the door and confront them. But instead, I stood there, frozen, my heart breaking into a million pieces. How long had this been going on? How could Jake, my best friend, betray me like this? And Kimberly, how could she do this to our family? I had to make a decision in that moment. I had to pretend that I didn't see them together. If I stormed in now, it would only lead to a confrontation that I wasn't prepared for. I needed time to think, to process what I had just witnessed. So I turned around and walked back to my car, my mind numb with shock. I drove aimlessly for what felt like hours. I couldn't go back to my father's house and risk explaining why I had left so abruptly. I ended up at a quiet park, sitting on a bench and staring blankly at the serene landscape, which seemed at odds with the turmoil inside me. I replayed the past few months in my mind, searching for signs I might have missed. The late nights, the secretive texts, the sudden distance between Kimberly and me. It all made sense now. But why hadn't I seen it before? Was I too trusting, too blind to the possibility of betrayal from the two people I trusted most? As the sun began to set, I knew I had to go back home. I couldn't avoid it forever. I needed to confront them, but I had to do it on my terms, when I was ready. When I finally walked through the front door, Kimberly greeted me with a smile acting as if nothing was amiss. Jake was gone and everything seemed normal. But I knew the truth now, and I had to decide what to do with that knowledge. The next few days were a blur. I went through the motions, pretending everything was fine while inside I was seething with anger and hurt. I needed to confront Kimberly, but I needed to do it calmly, rationally, 
Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. One evening, after putting our son to bed, I sat Kimberly down. I told her I knew about her and Jake. Her face went pale and she tried to deny it at first, but she could see in my eyes that I wasn't going to be fooled. The confrontation was ugly. Tears, shouting, accusations. It all came pouring out. She admitted to the affair, saying it had started a few months ago. She said she never meant for it to happen, that it just did. But her words felt hollow, a weak justification for the betrayal. I couldn't bear to look at her. The woman I loved, the mother of my child, had been unfaithful with my best friend. The pain was unbearable. Jake tried to call me, to explain himself, but I couldn't bring myself to talk to him. I felt a mixture of rage and deep sadness. I had lost not just a partner, but a friend as well. In the end, I knew I had to make a decision for the sake of my son. I couldn't let him grow up in a household filled with resentment and betrayal. Kimberly and I agreed to separate. It was the hardest decision I ever had to make, but it was necessary. Father's Day, the day that was supposed to be a celebration of my role as a father, had instead become a day of heartbreak and betrayal. But in the midst of the pain, I found strength. Strength to move on, to protect my son, and to rebuild my life. I learned a harsh lesson that day. Trust can be shattered in an instant, but the strength to move forward comes from within. I may have lost a partner and a friend, but I still had my son, and he was the reason I needed to stay strong. As I looked at my son sleeping peacefully in his crib, I vowed to be the best father I could be despite the betrayal, because in the end it was about him and giving him the love and stability he deserved.